This is the Daily Wealth Junkie Show, and thanks for joining us again today. My name is Brandon Dukeman here with Will Harvey, and we appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the episodes and the show wherever you're listening to so that you don't miss any of our daily episodes, and to rate and leave us a comment so that we know how we're doing. Also, join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash wealth junkies. And now I'm going to turn it over to Will to introduce our great guest for the day. Thank you so much, Brandon. Today we have Gary Lipsky on, and he, uh, he has been an entrepreneur his whole life. He's focused on doing good work with good people, and he's built a few different companies and had, has had lots of success doing that. And now his most recent venture uh, deals with um, being in the, in the real estate world. So uh, with that, Gary, can you give the listeners a little bit more about your background and what got you to where you are today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I always had that entrepreneur blood in me. Um, as a kid, I would detail cars during the summer. I'd uh, 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 shovel snow during the winter. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, in college, we started a uh, restaurant delivery service and um, set some other people to run it while we went back to college and they ran it into the ground. I started another one when I graduated college, but you know, it wasn't very satisfying to me. I remember my um, entrepreneurial teacher uh, in college would say, you know, do something that you're passionate about, do something that you love. And you know, when you're a kid, you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I just want to make right. It wears on you fast. Just like all we were doing is delivering more food, more widgets. And it just, you know, it doesn't, it wasn't satisfying. And um, so I actually, I got into film and I co-produced a, a few films, um, you know, low budget, independent stuff. But uh, that was a lot more satisfying to me. I was able to use my creative side, my business side. Um, but uh, at the time my wife got uh, pregnant, we we're gonna have a baby. And I, uh, we started a uh, after school outdoor leadership development company and, uh, we, you know, in the beginning, just, you know, small, small contracts and, and um, working with a little, little, um, little bit amount of kids. But I sold it 16 years later. We were working with 9,000 kids daily, 90 schools. Wow. We really had a tremendous impact. And during that time, I was investing in real estate. And when I sold it, it really gave me a, a jump start to, to get into real estate full time and really started um, expanding my portfolio. So I've been doing that. Uh, for almost three years now. Very cool. Awesome. So let's go back a little bit to kind of your first <clears throat> entrepreneurial venture, you know, the food delivery um, in college. What, what, where'd you get that idea from? How, you know, what year in college were you and, and what were some of the successes of it and what were some of the things that drove it into the ground? Yeah. So, um, I went to Boston University and there was a restaurant delivery service in the city and we got the idea from them. My business partner, my roommate at the time, he had to do a report for his entrepreneur class and he did a report on that. And when we came back for the summer, we're like, well, why don't we, why don't we try this? You know, um, we both have that entrepreneurial blood and, um, you know, we, we did it in, um, uh, in like New City in, uh, in New York. It was just for me, like 30 minute drive, that's where he was from. And it was a really dense area. And, um, you know, we sent out, uh, the news, uh, the newspaper guide to everyone in the area. And like the first, first night, you know, we get our radios, we're ready to go. We get like four calls, I think. And, um, you know, so it's like one an hour, I mean, it's nothing. but man, you know, we were just hustling every day, every day. And, towards the end of it, we were doing, you know, 60, 70 deliveries a night. Um, wow. Yeah. So it really went fast. We had an article in the paper and, uh, people were really excited. Um, but you know, we really didn't think through like the next steps. Like, I mean, you know, we just like, let's just open this and, and see what happens. And then we like, Oh, we have like something legitimate here and you know, really fumbled how we handed it off to the next people. Um, so it was just, it was a wasted opportunity, but, um, we really learned a lot about, you know, just, just getting our hands dirty and hustling, you know, I would, you know, if, if my older self would tell my younger self would be like, okay, well then, you know, start thinking much further out, not just like jumping in and not having like, you know, what's next. I mean, it was just like two months and they're like, oh, we got to go back to school. Like, yeah. you know. <laughs> 
Yeah. So you were basically like Grubhub before Grubhub, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had that vision, you know? Right. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool that you even did, were, were, were successful enough to do what you did there. Uh, yeah. and, and, go ahead, Will. No, I was just going to say, what, what do you think, looking back, because hindsight's twenty twenty. what do you think uh, led to its demise? Uh, was it the wrong people? Um, you know, first of all, and then this is, you know, again, if I told my younger self would be find, find mentors, find like-minded people. We, it was just my partner and I, you know, and so, you know, we were young, we didn't have, we didn't have all the answers, but we just like, Oh, we'll just do it ourselves versus getting guidance, you know, and that really would have given us a lot more, um, uh, range of thought, you know, cause mm -hmm. it was just, you know, blinders on and, you know, how, how, you know, what kind of succession plan we just, we just didn't think of those things. Um, we only knew what we knew. Um, and that is, I think a problem for, you know, a lot of people starting out. And even if people are in different businesses, just hearing them talk about different, um, uh, struggles that they're facing, it will relate to your business. So, uh, in my thirties, I got involved in a mastermind group and it really helped me. Um, particularly when I was looking to sell my business and get into something else. Cause that, that transition was, um, wasn't easy. And, uh, it took a while to have that, that courage to, to sell my business that I really liked, uh, and had for a while, but I wanted to have a new chapter, you know, um, while I was still, um, you know, young to, to do that, you know? Yeah. So one thing I liked that you said is that there was another, you basically took the idea from another group that was doing it just down the, you know, a couple blocks away or you know, another city from you. And I think that's one thing people kind of stumble upon is they think they need to create something new and brand new where you guys didn't do that. You, you took the idea and it sounds like you did better than them. And that's just, yeah, you gotta uh, do better. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if we were better or not, but it certainly gave us um, a, a, a blueprint. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think a lot of people are trying to yeah, recreate the wheel. And, the, you know, you take, take an idea and then, okay, how can we do it different? Do we do it better? Um, because you don't want to be, you know, fishing in the same pond. I think a lot of people, particularly in the, you know, this real estate multifamily, so small. And how do you separate yourself from others? And it's really about creating your niche mm -hmm. um, and, and, and finding investors outside the pool. Cause it's, it's funny. It's like you go to the same meetups and the same people and we're all fighting for the same investors. And it's, you've got to, you got to find, find the investors elsewhere. You got to separate yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so after that, can you give us kind of what, what, what you did, um, just immediately after the, you mentioned that you went into film production uh, and you, yeah. you touched on that really fast. You're like, ah, no big deal. I just produced a couple <laughs> of films. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. How you, um, how you got that role. Um, I always had, it's funny that creative and business, I always fighting in my, in my head. And that, that's why I love real estate because I can do both. And that's why I like the film. I, I was actually, I, I, I wrote a few scripts. I had something in development with uh, Michael Keaton's company, with MTV, um, but there was really never I'm a, kidding. you know, we like it, rewrite it. There's nothing ever definitive. And I was a PA in a couple of films, um, Die Hard 3, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3. But that was like mind numbing work. I'm like, screw this. I wanna, I wanna like do this myself, you know? And we got, we, you know, pulled together a little, you know, a little bit of money and, um, my, my buddy had a, a script and he asked me to produce it. And I think we did it for like $70,000, you know? Um, but, uh, it was, man, it was so much fun and just bootstrapping it and you know, filmed in my apartment, his apartment, the local church. Um, but, uh, yeah. And then, then we, I did, uh, I was, when I was working on another film, I met another guy and we were right, we wrote a script together. Uh, we, we shot it at the Statue of Liberty and Manhattan and, uh, in LA. And what were these films we, about? Um, so it was like back in the, uh, what was it nineties, I guess it was like the straight to uh, video action movie. Um, okay. we had some decent names back then, like Andrew Devoff. Um, Aida Turturro, who she was in The Sopranos, like recognizable faces. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, what we did was we just shot, it was funny, I visited a friend in, in Palm Springs. He was, he was in real estate and turning over a property, turning it into condos. And I said, oh man, this is a, like a really cool site to film something. And he's like, yeah, you can film something here. Little did he know what he was getting himself into. It was two months later, I roll in with a couple of trucks and like, yeah. you know, 30 <laughs> people. Hilarious. And uh, we, we filmed like, a, like an action shoot for like 12 minutes. And then we pre-sold that to a bunch of countries and that helped get us, you know, a couple hundred thousand. And um, then we raised the rest and uh, yeah, we shot it. Um, and uh, yeah, it was in at the time like Hollywood Video. Um, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and then I did another one with. Um, uh, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. What? But there were some like you know decent names, and that was uh, I think it was on like HBO and whatnot. Um, that's incredible. So it was a lot of fun, that's but like, wild. You know, it's a it's a it's a struggle too because you never. Uh, in film, everyone like steals a little bit from you or they, they're, you know, they tell you they like it, but like, it's, you know, there's nothing definitive and it's hard to control because you need them to distribute your film. You, you, you're not in control. Um, and I found that kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with that entrepreneurial I board. I want to be able to control my destiny. And exactly. I, I wasn't so able to. I got a couple questions about that. So how, how old were you when you began the film producing? Um, I guess I was, uh, 23, 24. Wow. Okay. You're young. So yeah. you said you raised some money. One of them was, you spent, it was about $70,000. Where did, where did you find the money for that? What um, your techniques? Just for some, uh, so my buddy raised the, the bulk of it because it was uh, mostly he had gotten started and then brought me on board, but it's some friends and family. Um, and then you bring in some people that want, you know, want to be producers. So like, hey, you can be a producer if you, you know, invest like 50,000. Okay. You know, so, um, and we had, and we had some contracts already before we started from the foreign pre-sales we did uh, with countries. Awesome. So. Let's say uh, there was like Brazil it was like 50,000. So you didn't get that money then, but at least you were able to leverage those contracts, right. you know, for, uh, for people to get excited about the project. Okay. So that's then, really cool. So I guess moving forward to, I don't want to misquote what it is. It was a, essentially a childcare business that you, you began. Yeah, so eventually, uh, we it actually more started out doing uh, adventure stuff. So we did like team building mm -hmm. and outdoor ed. Um, it's funny, uh, a guy I was running a script with introduced me to a school. Um, he ran a music education company. And uh, I said, oh, I love sports. When I was um, in high school, I ran some sports programs for a while. And he introduced me to a principal. And she said, I need a, a swim coach. Do you have someone? I said, yeah. Went on Craigslist, hired a swim coach. That was my first uh, first gig, you know. So That's I take awesome. a little bit of piece of that spread, you know. And um, then I hired someone else, and he had a lot of adventure experience. So we started off more doing like uh, some some kids sports programs, uh, some outdoor ed. We worked with the Los Angeles Park and Recs, and then that you know one school said, "Hey, can you do an after school program?" And then our company really blew up after that. We we started getting some grant money. Um, wow. you know, $500 contract turned into a $5,000 contract turned into a $15,000 contract. And then it just started picking up steam. we made just enough money each year to keep going. Um, and eventually, you know, we were getting a million dollar, $2 million, $3 million contracts. And, and, and we became very after school focused because a lot of it was grant based mm. and that's really what helped blow up our, our company. But yeah, we own two rock walls, you know, portable kayaks, mountain bikes, camping gear and for a lot of these kids it was their first experience uh doing those things and it wasn't about climbing the highest or you know kayaking so far it was about these new experiences that these inner city kids can take and learn about um trying new things self-confidence just being in, in in just a park that's you know a few miles away that they never would venture to in the past you know so that was, it was a lot of fun. Eventually it became like just so much paperwork and government, you know, BS that you had to deal with. And, right. Um, 
yeah, I've been doing it 16 years. I, I, I wanted that, that, that next challenge, but, uh, certainly, um, you know, it's, it's, it was, it was a baby and it was definitely hard to let go. And, um, you know, I still keep tabs on them and everything and, uh, help out whenever I can, you know? Yeah. It sounds like a very fulfilling, I mean, that, that was really cool. You were talking about how these inner city kids, they never get to experience that stuff and just, just, I'm sure seeing them light up when they do it for the first time, that's, that's pretty cool and pretty rewarding. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I can see why it'd be tough to, to let them that go but uh, you also you kind of alluded that the government uh, they're they're good at screwing things up aren't they yeah, yeah. they kind of made your life uh, hell it sounds like <laughs> yeah it's just um yeah paperwork compliance i mean it's uh, obviously it's something you have to do but sure. um, you know that's what my my job kind of evolved into and um you know before i was super hands-on and doing these activities and you know as the company grows you get more and more removed and, um, um, right. Yeah, you know, I, I just, uh, I wanted that next, next challenge quite honestly, you know, that's cool. So, so talk about how you prepared to sell. Um, cause I, 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 that's so many entrepreneurs, they, they make, um, a lot of their money by, by building up an asset and then selling it. And, uh, so, so can you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so probably about, uh, maybe about 10 years into it, business partner and I, we really made a conscious decision to move from essentially like a mom and pop to really a, a legitimate business. So um, we joined the Vistage, which is a mastermind group. And you know, we had people, it was like 14 people. Um, they ran companies that from 3 million to like 350 million, you know, and we, we wow. all had the same issues and usually it's, it's, people issues, you know, finding good people, keeping good people. Um, and that really helped prepare me to, uh, you know, to turn my business into like, you know, like I said, a legitimate business. We worked with a consultant as well and, you know, came up with a, a five-year plan and really worked backwards and really built up the team. Um, cause before it was, it was so much reliant on my business partner and myself. And now we were having a really good team. So, you know, towards the end, we had over 700 employees, but wow, I'm only dealing with my four top execs that report mm. to me and they, you know, and then you, you know, you, you pyramid down, you right. know, so um, we really built a strong team and, and quite honestly, it didn't need my partner and I anymore. We, you know, we, we had good people in place to, 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 to run it and it was exciting for them to, to kind of take, take it and run with it. That's a, is that a great feeling to to build something that ultimately doesn't need you to function? I mean, that, that's to me, in my eyes, that's a successful business that you can create to where it, you cannot, you know, spend a dime or a minute on it, excuse me. And it, it still functions the way it's supposed to. Yeah. It's, 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 it is, it's cool. And it's a weird feeling. Cause they're yeah. like, yeah, oh, you know, my baby is off and running. Right. Right. But My baby's all grown up. It's this living, breathing organism. So right, that, that's, right. that's and, really cool. And, and they were, they were able to bring more value than I was at, the, you know, like eventually my value was, was lessened because of their, their, you know, what they were doing on a day to day basis, you know? Very cool. Very cool. So once you, uh, once you did end up selling it, were you, did they keep you on for a while uh, in a, in a specific role or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still, uh, an independent consultant to them okay. you know, help, um, with some of their financials if they have, you know, you know, questions with that. Um, just setting up the team in place. I was meeting with, uh, the executives, you know, for lunch, like, um, you know, on a, con on a continual basis. Um, they don't need me that much, but you know, um, I'm always, again, I'm always there for them. Very cool. Yeah. So, so you just started reading the paper afterwards and, and not, you know, just sitting at home, sleeping in every day. Is that, is that what happened? Oh man. I'm, I'm so <laughs> not like that. Um, I know, so, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, actually, um, you know, so we, we got, we prepared the business to sell it, but it was really, we came to the conclusion that I was going to either buy out my partner or my partner was going to buy out me. And so we kind of had to figure out like the leverage piece because like, you know, how, how do you put a, a dollar amount? So we, we had, had an evaluation uh, a few years prior. So that helped us. So, you know, as we're 
trying to figure this out. I'm still working on, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Um, and I was spending, I had done some real estate investment and I, I really, um, uh, like that. Um, I had some friends in real estate and they, uh, had, a, had, uh, the flexibility of their, of, of a lifestyle to travel and still do, do work. And I, I really like that. I like the creative side of real estate, the business side. So once I sold it, I was just delving into all the different facets of real estate and where I wanted to be. Uh, I had a single family rental. All my houses I owned was always value add. So I'd, I'd buy it and fix it up and we'd live in there two, five, seven years and then, and then sell it, you know, and get that, um, the tax deduction. Um, so finally I, I settled on, uh, uh, multifamily it was like running a business you know i've got my property manager who i rely on to really hire a lot of the subs and uh take care of the property i stay on top of them i come up with a business plan um but i thought that was a really good fit for me and i could scale up i love the idea of, of scaling up and uh it was just a matter of um i joined the some rock group and that helped me be around like-minded people nice. And I was going to a lot of meetups and, and that was really beneficial to be around people that could provide momentum uh, to, to what I was trying to achieve because real estate is such a team sport. And I had to, I had to shift that mindset, you know, after selling to my business partner, we didn't always get along. Um, and, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs don't want to have partners and with real estate to really get ahead, you have to have partners, you know, you can't be an expert in everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to do more deals. You're going to be more successful by working with others. And um, so that was that was a big mind shift for me to be able to trust uh, some others and um, to uh, you know I could bring my expertise and they could bring their expertise and, and we can accomplish a lot more. So now, can you bring that concept back into let's say if you made that realization back when you first started the the adventure? the child adventure business, do you think that you could have gotten even bigger if you, if you teamed up and, and had more like-minded people or you think that's just necessarily for real estate business? And no, I mean, we, we did partner with, with others, but um, we were in this great program with uh, the Los Angeles Unified School District and a bunch of other partners. Mm -hmm. um, but really, um, you know, having a mentor, being in a mastermind group, that would have provided rocket fuel to me. You mm -hmm. know, we, it was that, not necessarily like a chip on the shoulder, but you know, you, 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 you know, when you're in your twenties, you think you can, you're invincible, you do it on your own. And, um, and, and that would have, you know, if I was in a, in a group that would have provided rocket fuel for me. So yeah, we would have accomplished so much more, so much mm -hmm. quicker, you know? Um, and not try, you know, have partners sooner. Um, uh, that, that definitely would have helped. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, you know, it's really cool. We, we've actually interviewed someone on the show and, um, he talked about how he wanted to start a business and he was like, I got to figure out what business I want to start. And, uh, he, he didn't even know. And I find that a lot of people like that, that just, start from ground zero and are like, you know what? I need to hire a mentor or I need to find a mentor somehow. And I need to join a mastermind like you did with the Brad Sumrock group. Yeah. Um, those ones that start at ground zero and are just in a hunger for, for education and learning. Um, they end up doing a lot more. They, they end up being a lot more successful than somebody that might know a little bit about the business and says, you know what? I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to, I'm going to do it on my own. I already know. I don't need partners. I don't need a mentor. Um, so that that's, it, and it sounds like that's kind of what happened with you. Um, as you got older and more experienced, now you're in real estate. It sounds like one of the first things you did is join that, uh, join that group. Whereas if you, maybe if you had a, a mentor or a mastermind, when you started the delivery company, you'd still yeah. be doing that or. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You would have been um, Grubhub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, and, and you don't have to spend a ton of money. I know there's there's a lot of programs out there that are super expensive. Mm -hmm. um, even you go to a meetup and you, you find some friends and um, 
you know, that could be even beneficial, you know? So if you don't have the money, it doesn't, you know, you find a way, um, just start something, but, uh, being with people that are going to push you and make you think, and, um, there's that some level of account accountability, like each time you meet, whether it's a monthly and like you better get your stuff done that you said you were going to get done. That really helps. Yeah. Uh, Cause I know I had to bring my a game every month to that meeting and, and be prepared. And, um, it's easy to get content and, um, you know, um, I guess not focused, but if you can stay on track and be persistent, you're going to be successful, whatever you, you, you do, you know? Yeah. And That's right. uh, I know I've mentioned this book in earlier episodes, but there's along the lines of the group that you surround yourself with and, and mastermind group, it's called tribe of millionaires. Um, I would, highly recommend reading it and and it the point of it is basically to prove to you the the importance of being in a group of like-minded and and like-minded individuals and individuals who are above you and so to help you excel and i think it's that's an incredible book it definitely changed my perspective on the on the reason why you need to be around people who are going to push you and elevate you past where you are yeah so yeah I, yeah that's that's so true um gary what what are you working on now in in the real estate world and uh what's what's the vision and uh goal looking 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 like mo- moving forward so we bought a 42 unit in tucson uh end of may and uh, nice. congrats yeah thank you um we're we're killing it on that deal we're well above pro forma nice and- so we may exit that next spring, uh, wow. one year, and because it's it, we hope and we're projecting to be at our five year plan in basically one year. Uh, That's awesome. That's unreal. So yeah, that that would be uh, that would be great for our investors and for us. Um, T- tell us a little bit about that deal. How did you find it, and what what makes it such a great deal? Yeah. So um, my business partner at the time, he found it. Um, uh, he was the first to see it, which always helps, you know, um, because you, you can make a preemptive offer. You don't get in a bidding war. I mean, we've lost in you know a few months, you know, a number of best and finals and, um, you know, it, you and everybody they, else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And they suck. You know, you get in a bidding war and you're going right. to lose pretty much every single time. And if you win, you're like, oh, did I like pay too much? You know? Yeah, pay it. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so we really, we're really aggressive on, um, locking down deals, uh, early, uh, and avoiding the, uh, the bidding war and, uh, and the nonsense that comes, comes with it. Um, it was, um, we, we paid like 39,000 a door. It was an ugly looking, um, building, but it was in a good part of town and, uh, it just needed some love and, you know, we did an exterior paint job. We changed out the, like, these, um, these uh, patio doors and we, we gave them like real doors. Um, we're doing some interior renovations, but people are staying, they're paying like 50% more rent and not even asking to, uh, for us to rehab their unit. So i um, really excited about that. That's you can't find any good <laughs> near that price anymore. No, yeah, definitely no, not. Not, nothing, nothing even close 39, to that. 39 yeah. doors is pretty awesome. And, and Tucson has, uh, has been one of the top markets for rent growth uh, in the last year. So we're really excited. We're looking for more stuff there. We are closing on a 128 unit in Phoenix um, nice. at the end of uh, this month. And so that's a you know, much bigger project. Uh, we partnered with a few more people, uh, a little over $15 million purchase price. We're nice. putting in $1.4 million into the property. And it's a, a 5.7 million raise. So significantly bigger uh, project um, uh, that we're you know really excited about. We already had the name change. We already started on the permits. Like we we don't wait till we get the property and then start implementing the business plan. We actually start implementing the business plan while we're in escrow, so we're we're ready to run and get uh, get started from day one. Right, yeah. So we're ahead of the game, and that's that's what happened with the Tucson property too. We were ahead of the game, so it helped get us you know above our performers right from the start you know right 
and now it's looking like you're going to be able to just just do really well on that thing and and uh, sell it sell it for a nice spread there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you syndicate both those deals? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're both syndications. Got it. That's Very awesome. Cool. Uh, you go from smaller deal to massive fifteen million dollars. Yeah. Deal. I mean, that's <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, and it sounds so. like the small deal is a home run. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're hoping everything stays on track. You know, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, it's looking good and. Um, it, just, it really uh, gave us a lot more credibility, even with just one small deal with, uh, with right, brokers. Right. Um, you know, they all talk and uh, knowing that we, we close and we're doing well, um, you know, we're getting stuff that's maybe closer to off market, but you know, you don't, you don't really get like real off market. Right. But right. We're getting a little bit more love, which is nice. Yeah. And honestly, I think some people kind of sometimes overlook the smaller deals because they're so focused on creating the numbers, you know, they're, they're focused on getting to, you know, 500,000, you know, that many units, but you know, the, there are still smaller deals out there that provide excellent returns and, and excellent investments. So. Yeah, that's actually part of our business plan mm-hmm. to, to look at smaller deals that we can maybe get in and out of in a year. Yeah. Um, you know, we've made a, a couple offers on some smaller stuff that, um, um, that, that we liked. Uh, it was just, the, you know, the price just went uh, too high, so we got out of it. But yeah, it's definitely, we're going to do the, 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 the bigger ones and then and still uh, try to capture some of these smaller ones that we could be in and out make a good return for our investors and move on to the next one. Love that. Sounds like a great plan. Yeah. So, all right, Gary, we're going to move right into our moments of truth. It's the same seven questions that we ask everybody and I'm going to dive right into it with the first one. Who is your success role model? You know, I don't, I don't have one person. I take a lot from a lot of different people and it's, it's not about the units sold or how much money they're making. It's about the, you know, balancing their life, healthy, a uh, happy and healthy lifestyle. Like those are the things that impress me. Um, you know, class, how they deal with people. Like, so I, I take a little bit from uh, everyone. Everyone I feel has something to offer. And uh, uh, I, I appreciate uh, that from so, so many people in my life. Yeah. That's like great. It. That makes sense. What's your biggest success? Um, it's funny. I used to joke that uh, my biggest success was building my uh, daughter's kitchen set a few years ago for the holidays. It was like 200 pieces. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, it gives me anxiety like just thinking about that. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is like my Mona Lisa, you know? Yeah. Uh, but for business, uh, I would say <laughs> that it was, um, my, my previous business, the, uh, the outdoor ed and after school program. I mean, we were positively affecting 9,000 students daily really changing communities. So, um, I mean, I, I really felt good about that. That was, uh, it was, uh, it was like, we call it like a double, um, uh, bottom line, you know, we were able to make some money and do, do some positive. That's cool. Yeah. yeah I think it's good. It provides a lot of opportunity for those kids. Um, yeah, I love that. What does a typical day for you look like? You know, no two days are alike. Um, it's like I, I set up a triage and I handle like the most important thing at the mm. time, whether it's like we've got to look at a property, underwrite, meet with an investor. Um, I wish there was more normalcy, but I'd probably be bored. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's tons of emails, but yeah, try to find my next deal to work with my investors every, every, every day. Every what, day. What time do you typically uh, wake up in the morning? Oh, I'm a, I'm an early riser, so I'm up by five fifteen usually. I okay. Read the paper, um, try to work out, um, and uh, then you know I, I could be on my computer as early as you know seven a.m. Um, but I have that, again, I have that flexibility, which is nice because uh, you know if I got you know if my kid needs something, I can go uh, hang out with them for you know an hour and then come back to work and, uh, that's great. Work late, you know, but, um, you know, I try to, I try to find that, that balance and some, some months, like I, I, I haven't had a vacation in a long time. We've been plugging away. I actually, I just sold a, a high end flip. I just bought another one. And so it's, it's, it's hectic now, but I know, you know, in a month it's, you know, come the holidays, it's really going to slow down. So then I'll, uh, I'll take some time off. Very cool. Uh, what's your, what's your favorite quote? 
uh, carpe diem, seize the day. Um, mm. We all face opportunities every day um, and some people take them and some people, some people don't. So I, I use that to remind myself because there are definitely times in my life where I, I didn't and I, I kick myself. And so I try not to let that happen again. Yeah, that's good. So now, I know you mentioned you're, you're very busy, but what are some of your hobbies when you're not busy? Uh, I love beach volleyball. Uh, I moved down to Manhattan Beach uh, 2011. So I just started playing that religiously. I do that twice a week. Uh, I was born in Queens, so I'm a diehard Mets, Jets, and Knicks fan. And um, I love hiking. Sorry travel. to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, my teams have not. Well, we're Jets. Redskins fans, so yeah, we're yeah. in the same boat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, what is the best business book that you've read? Uh, Fierce Conversations. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm still getting better at this. I have a long way to go, but having those tough conversations in this book really helps you have that because um, if you, you can master that, having those tough, and when, whether it was personal, business, whatever, um, that will really help you uh, have empathy for where that other person is coming from. And um, um, really, it'll set you up for success in whatever you do, I, I feel. Yeah. I've, I've actually never heard of that. What's the title of Fierce Conversations? Conversations. Okay. Yeah. If there was one key piece of advice you could leave our listeners with about achieving success, what do you think it would be? Huh. Um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, that men mentorship or um, mastermind group, you know, mm -hmm. get with like-minded people that will add fuel that, you know, when, when you're struggling and you know, you're, um, you're facing doubt and just being with those other people will provide that energy, that, that fuel, um, and maybe a, a different perspective for you to look at. So I, I definitely, definitely recommend that, that, that really, every time I'm with a, a group, like when we, you know, uh, Will and I were at the raising capital, uh, summit, it just, it just gives that fuel to the fire, you know, it gets you, it gets you excited. Yeah. And it gives you different perspectives where, you, you know, you're, uh, for me, I live in my own little world. So, <laughs> Um, so it's, it's easy to, to, to really, um, to not look outside of that. So then going to these events and talking to different mentors and people that are more successful than you, it just helps kind of take a step back and, and realize what you need to be doing and, and what you're doing that probably isn't, isn't the highest and best use of your time. So no, I think that that's, uh, that's really good. Yeah. And also, like you said, it, it kind of jump starts jump starts you you know every, every you go to one of those you know events every quarter or something because i think that it kind of boosts your morale and, and really gets you back into the excitement of why you're doing what you're doing and, and things like that because I, I know for me sometimes it's a little discouraging when things aren't you know especially if you're looking for deals or something and you're not getting anything good for a while and you're like damn this sucks you end up going to one of these events and i think it jump starts you back into the you know the excitement of you know why you're doing what you're doing yeah yep so. that's exactly right so Gary, how, how can our listeners get in contact with you or, you know, if they're looking to invest some of their money or. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some deals? Um, my phone number is 310-592-2604. Shoot me, uh, shoot me a text. Give me a call. I'm happy to talk to you. You can shoot me an email, Gary at breakofdaycapital.com. Check out my website. Uh, we do webinars every month. This month, October 28th, we're doing one on uh, what the heck is cost segregation. Uh, uh -huh it for uh, real estate investors um check that out email me i'll send you the link and uh yeah i'm happy to help out uh talk to people about uh real estate i love i love talking real estate love it very cool yeah this webinars i'm sure are extremely valuable do you, do you archive those so yeah people can play them back later absolutely absolutely awesome, yeah. awesome. so definitely check those cool. out if you're if you're interested guys um gary we appreciate you being on today um yeah, you got an awesome story and we Appreciate your, your insight on everything. And for our listeners, don't forget, subscribe to our show wherever you're listening to it and rate and leave us some comments so we know how we're doing. And last, join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash wealth junkies. Again, Gary, we appreciate you being on the show and uh, everybody will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Gary.